Half a million people emigrated from Ireland to Britain between 1951 and 1961. It's once in a lifetime that thing happened when a multitude of Irishmen went to a place called Camden Tower. Hundreds of them and thousands of them. The leader of every house in the village went. The head of the family. Kerry, Connemara, Mayo, uh, Bell Mullet, Farnmore Island, Weedore. Going back to the 19th century when the railways were built, to the 18th century when the canals were built, Irish labour was used to a, a very significant extent. After the war, all the utilities had to be replaced, all the telephone cables, all the water installation. Britain was being rebuilt literally from the ground up and even from below ground level up. When Irish people came over from Ireland in the 1950s, one of the things they talk about how surprised they were by the destruction in London, the fact that it was a city on its knees. It was unbelievable in England that time. It was like another invasion, I'd say. <laughs> Steady Germans, you had paddies with jobs. They had toughness, they had tenacity, and they had common sense, and they had no shortage of native intelligence. If you looked the part and you had muck on your boots and you looked like you could stick a day's work in. You either get a job or you don't, and if you don't get a job, then you could be on your uppers. You wouldn't ask where they were going, how long, what time, what price, because it was kind of a set price. This was damned hard work. We have no conception of it today. I know the stories of the guys who came over and built in the 50s, 60s, 70s, um, and the images of them building and the injuries they've suffered and the way that their body tells that story. And there'd be two or three foremen walking up and down, up and down, all day. Come on, dig it up, lads, throw it back. Well if you didn't throw that back far enough, it would come down again on top of you and it would bloody well kill you. You might be five foot down in the trench. The danger of the work, people down holes, getting buried in concrete, putting a shovel through a high voltage line and getting electrocuted. There's one song in particular which I think really captures it well. In a tunnel underground, a young Limerick man was found. He was built into the new Victoria line. So come all you navvies bold who think that English gold is just waiting to be taken from each sod. The likes of you and me will never get an OBE or a knighthood for good service to the hod. They're the concrete master race to keep you in your place, the ganger man to kick you to the ground. If you ever try to take part of what the bosses make when they're building up and tearing England down. It was a really exciting time, it was a very liberating time to come to England and for others, uh, they really struggled. You made a decision to leave. If I go, it could be said that I'm running away and they were expected to send money back, given no means to do so. The people on this side, I believe, are caught in this thing. That if you left home, you have to go back a millionaire. I mean, you emigrated to this country, you stayed. When I cross the river from the embankment to Waterloo, what I'm looking at is essentially a development which was built largely by Irish labour in the 1950s. And I think about the individuals who, you know, grafted and, and put those bricks together. That uh, sense of achievement goes very deep for anyone of Irish extraction. Yeah, of course we built the city, but we're still building the city, you know, and we just build it in so many different ways. We didn't just build London with bricks and mortar and carrying hods. We built communities in Kilburn and Camden. The City of London, the, the heart of the British economy, the heart of the London economy, has a huge number of Irish people there, some of them in construction still, but tending to be more designing Britain these days rather than physically building it. The Irish are now making a contribution at a different level. And I think there's a confidence that just was missing in the 80s. They're really well qualified, they've got loads of ideas, they've got loads of ambition. They can't really see what would stop them in the way that people might have in the past. Standing on top of Primrose Hill and looking um, south, an awful lot of the major landmarks have an Irish imprint on them. The muck shifters, the various trades, the architects, consulting engineers, the Irish names are there. 
The Irish built the railways, they built the canals, they built the motorways, they built the city after the Second World War. The contribution that Irish Labour put into the built environment in this country was absolutely immense and I don't think it's been given the credit it should have.